Hey guys, as I mentioned in the last video, I was seeing the cancer doctor on the Friday. Um, that all happened and things sort of have gone south a little bit. So what I have, and it's been confirmed, is I've got a rare case of cancer. It's both Hodgkin's lymphoma and non-Hodgkin's lymphoma together. It's um, both the T-cell and the B-cell in the blood sort of true so as you guys are watching this video it it'll be the thursday that i normally release and i am starting the chemo process so i've still got the hot spots in my neck and my chest that they're concerned about so they're going to give me six bouts of chemo over I think it's well, it's about three weeks each between each bout, um, so it's going to be a fair jag. Um, they're going to hit it fairly heavily, I believe, and um, just going to try and mop up all the loose ends, all the shit in there, and try and get me cleared. So it's going to be a bit of a battle, but I am going to attempt to make a video each week um, as a goal so it may depending on what I'm making whatever it might be a bit scattered and I've just been in editing this week's video and I do apologize because I've had a heap of appointments this week um, been in and out and this video here is a little bit scattered in my view it's not consistent so I do apologise for that. But I am going to attempt to make a video each week on whatever I'm making here because I've got to stay active. Um, that's a big thing. I've got to stay positive and active. And in here I'm always, it's, it gets me away from everything. So that's where we're up to. Um, just got to try and beat it now. And I think we will. So thanks for all the kind words and the comments that I've been receiving and the email still. It's very, very humbling. And um, I'm going to do my best to keep you guys entertained. So here comes the other intro for what we're making here. I hope you enjoy the video. Thanks, guys. See you next week. Good day and welcome back. Bit of an update on them phosphor bronze parts I done. Um, that one I was concerned about with that little bit of original mark. Yeah, it was no drama, so that job's done and dusted and finished. And yeah, that should work well. What I've got to make now is a low tension igniter out of a vintage hit and miss engine. Uh, Trevor's doing up a, I can't remember the brand of what make it is. It's bloody old anyway. So we did pour the Babbitt bearings the other day in it. Um, I didn't film none of that because I'd never seen it done before. So Jacko, Trevor and myself done them and um, worked out really, really good. They were spot on. So pretty interesting. But this is an igniter that Jacko made for one of his engines that he's lent me to copy off. Dimensionally, it's not correct. I do have to modify the dimensions a fair bit, but the principle is going to be the same. So these run on a coil, battery, uh, low tension. So when the actual contacts come together, they don't spark. It's when they release, they give out the spark. So this takes place for spark plug, basically. Um, so when the the uh, cam comes around, pushes it right up against this spring-loaded tensioner, brings the contacts together, and then it, the, the rod keeps going while it's spring-loaded. And when it comes back, it fires. So this is what I've got to make. This one here you can time quite easily with this split mount here. You can time it um, to get your gap and everything right. So I've never made anything like this. So this is going to be pretty interesting. And 
went out to Trav's yesterday and got some measurements, rough ones of what I'd got to work with. So just going to try and make it happen. Okay, this has got a bit of chrome on this bar and it's just over 69 mil. So I've just put a rag down just to try and catch that chrome crap before it comes off. But yeah, I've got to bring this down to 66. Okay, we're over that chrome section as far as we need. Sort that shit out later. That should be close enough to 66 on the money. It's not bad. Okay, so this portion here is going to be 15 mil on the one I make. And it'll be a rectangle when I'm finished because the way the block is the engine block is set up yeah, it's a bit of a pain in the ass it's a wreck well, it's not even a rectangle it's just a, a casting like a sort of type of rectangle casting that's not actually a rectangle so I've worked out by the time I make this a 35 mil boss by the time I square it up it should just fit in there nicely We're going to attempt to part this off. That wasn't bad, eh? That parted off quite good. That corn is the only way to go for parting off. Okay, I've got to form the rectangle on here now. So I've just worked out the offsets that I've got to be from centre with this half inch cutter. Just hope it's sharp enough. I have a funny feeling it's not going to be, but anyway. It'll end up being 19mm wide, 27mm long. Okay, now I can put in two holes, three a holes. There are uh, inch and three quarter centers. That's them two holes done. Okay, I need two holes, 14 mil apart. So seven mil each side of center. I'm gonna drill and rain these quarter inch.
the fella I borrowed this off gave me some advice the hole that takes this moving part wants a, wants a chamfer on it whether it be 45 or 60 degree and when I make this part here it has to have the corresponding chamfer um, apparently a bit of car bits of carbon and that can get down in there and make this thing stick and not work as good and they say that putting a chamfer there it acts like a valve and the two two faces can rub together and um, stop any crap going down in there so that's what I'm going to do Okay, on the one I borrowed, there is a couple of other holes. One for this peg, one for this earth screw, for the earth wire. I'm not gonna put them in yet because I'm not 100% sure where they've gotta be located to be spot on. So what I'm thinking is this can come out. I can make up this boss now. I can get that welded on to the opposite side, then follow it up with a ream, I'm hoping drill and ream and join the two holes together bit of luck anyway and then get on making all this other fiddly stuff okay I'll bring this up to speed a bit I've got the young fella just to tick that on this morning for me so that's on I used a bit of shaft out of a old printer and turned a quarter inch rod out of that using a TNGG insert and slowest feed rate, 600 RPM with coolant, that's the finish you get. Can't complain about that. And it fits like a glove. So now what I've got to do is I've only got 27 mil to play with from that base yeah looking at that which I've got to replicate that's just on well it's 26 so I'm going to spin this up in a lathe and take a few mil off this face just to give me a bit more freedom and then I'm going to build that piece that's sitting on the end of there it'll slide over this shaft slide over that end and I'll just run the TIG around the top which will hold that on there then later on once I make all these pieces I can determine the length and cut it off okay I've just had Trevor in and we've been talking about this part what we ended up doing while he was here we've opened this up to 8 mil this is where the electrode or the the insulated pole is going to go so Trevor's gone home to turn, well he's got some, um, I can't remember the name of the stuff, the insulation stuff, the hard plastic brown stuff. He's got some of that at home, he's going to have a crack at turning some, some bushes up. So that's taking care of that bit.
Okay, so we've got the rough shape. This still has to have a fair bit taken off the back here. Um, and obviously round it off. But most of that's just going to be fiddly stuff, which I probably won't show. Um, but I'll just show the final, final bit. But I think it'll be okay. I am going to have to try and spin it up in the lathe. Do a bit of fancy work on the bottom here, but I'll work that out as I go. But I am going to tick this on the end now. Well, that certainly changed shape. There it is there. After a bit of fettling with a file and a belt, si belt grinder. Keeping in mind, this thing can be timed. So the shape of this doesn't matter. As long as it contacts in here. As long as it makes a contact, that's all that matters. It's got a champ, but it's got a taper on here. Plus in there, like the old mate said, to put on there. So it sort of prevents the carbon from going down in there and making this stiff, apparently. That time will tell. So that part's done. Moving on to another part. Got to make this piece. So this is what gives you the adjustment on the gap between the two contacts. So what I've done, I've got a bit of 10mm plate, just a bit off cut. I've drilled and reamed a quarter hole. Um, it's going to have to have this clearance hole and a thread put in, so it'll act as a clamp. What my plan is here, um, slit and saw up, put a cut through to the middle of that hole, and then I'm going to come in and cut down the bottom here as well. On that bottom line you can see that just there's a real faint scribe line and the rest I'm just going to shape on the um, grinder I think Well, that went pretty painlessly, and bugger me, it's bloody near in the middle of the hole. Well, there we go, two seconds on the belt grinder. Grab the original. Still got a little bit of machining to do on this one. She's not far off. Just got to machine. This is too fat here, so I'll machine a bit of that off. Then I can hold it, and drill it, and tap it. And I've also got to make a pin up for a spring. I was going to make this part out of one piece, but then when you look at it, if you make this a big diameter here and it's a fair bit of milling and stuffing around just to achieve that part, so I've decided I'm going to make it out of two pieces and take the two pieces together. First of all, I make this part that goes over the shaft 
and make a rectangle, weld it on, then just shape it on the belt sander. It's going to be the easiest and quickest, and it'll work. So, put in the right, <coughs> put in the right cog will be better. Okay, so this has got a bit of a taper here where the spring recess is over, just for it a, more of appearance wise I think, more than anything, so. This part slides on, now this has to have the piece that comes welded off here, which connects up to this piece. Pushes up against that, that dog, if you want to call it a dog. Okay, so that's the part we're attempting to make. I have changed this and I made this a straight shank in the end, off camera. Um, and I have very dodgily tigged on a block there, which I'm going to attempt to shape into that. Wish me luck, because I don't know how I'm going to go, but we're going to have a go at it. So I've got to round off, get this lid off this texture. So I've got to round all this off now. Alright, uh, after a bit of fettling with a file, that's what we got. Which is bloody good, because it's got enough there for the bar to come round, clip this, and push it out of the way continue on so that is that's really good so that is as good as finished bar a hole for a spring in here somewhere which I've got to work out yet now I'll admit this is not as pretty as I wanted this, this part to be but yeah I haven't got time to be making another one now Okay, so moving on, I have to make the insulated pole that goes through here. Can't really explain properly how I'm going to do it, but it's going to have a... It's going to be 5mm with a 5mm thread that the nuts will go on this side and the um, terminal, electrical terminal. Um, just with a couple of nuts and a couple of washers. And this end will have a larger knob on the end so this contacts with, but I've got a machine two flats on it so we can hold it with a spanner while we, or a little shifter or whatever to do it up on this side here. Machine this down to 5 millimeters and um, 35 mil long with a 5 mil thread on this end for about, it's only going to be about 10 mil of thread on it. So I'm going to do this in stages to try and lower the deflection a little bit. Yeah, so that's 0 0.3 up, 0 0.03 up. Okay, that fits. So now I have to thread. I'll thread 15mm 
mil. I am going to do it with a die. Hank Stiffers Soup All Tap. That turned out pretty darn good, thankfully. Hopefully the nub will fit on. It won't be as sloppy as a as Max would say, a cock and a shirt slave. There she is. I've got to take three millimeters off the end. Okay, after looking at this a bit further, I'm just going to hold this in a vise. And when I put this first nut on, on the final assembly, I'll just put a bit of Loctite. Because once it's on once, it shouldn't have to come back off. Once we get the wire on there, then we can just nip that up, block tight it. So I'll move on now to making the spring similar to this. And I've also got to put a little drill hole in there for where that spring will clip into. Hmm, it's got a bit of fiddling around to work this spring out first. Okay, I'm going to make the spring, so I've made a pretty crude jig here. Now, don't get up me too much about this, but I'm hoping it's going to work, eh? All I've done was yeah, feed it in through the side of the tool holder on the pliers, hold a bit of tension on it and just start winding and hope for the best. Once about five rounds, I reckon. I've got no idea where this is going to work or not. took off. It's got spring behind it. Better make another one because I can't find the one that just took off. <laughs> I'm fucked. I, I just can't find it. It's gone. Anyway, we've got enough wire here to build another one. And just be a bit more cautious next time. Now we'll try again. Hold on to it this time, so we don't lose this one. Spring, yeah, it made it too big. Here's the one Jacko made. Uh, let me fiddle around with this again. I'm gonna make another one, it's a bit smaller. Have to turn down the mandrel a touch. Right, oh, we've had some success. Keeping in mind, I've still got to put a stopper down in here. I just went and drilled a two and a half mil hole through that shaft. That's all the spring's got to do. Obviously, I've got to make up a different clip for there. Um, so next I think I might slip on and build this and drill and tap for a pin in there. Okay, I'm going to make the stand, that long stem that holds a spring. 
I'm going to put a quarter 20 thread on the end. Um, so machine, this is out of a printer, this shaft. So machine that crap off. Machine back 12 mil down the quarter inch so I can put the thread on it. Part it off. And then I can um, round the end of it and put the groove in for the to retain the spring. I'm using the old die holder because I haven't made up a bush for the new one I made yet. Been lazy, yes, I have been lazy. Now this die that I'm using was sent in by the viewer. A viewer I showed it in a few videos ago. It sent the um, the big long arbor. So thank you very very kindly. And it's nothing like using a nice sharp die. Okay, you can see what this is for, that pin. I haven't locked tied it into place yet, but it's to, to keep the gap open. Spring loads it back. So I can lock tight that in now. And then off camera, I'm going to drill and tap a quarter inch hole just for the earth wire. And then I've got to cut this off, this stem off, and then sort out a pin for that. Well, I think I'm pretty much pleased to say that I've got this by the balls. I know I didn't show 100% of this build, but there was a lot of just small fiddly shit going on. Can't film every every last little aspect of the whole show because you'll never get anything done. So I've just got to get that spring over that. I've locked tighted that pin in. I've got to lock tight that one in after. I just want to make sure everything's right with Trevor's at when we get out to the engine. Make sure everything's right there and then I'll lock tight that in. That spring worked out good. Bit of MIG filler wire, perfect size. Here we go. I wasn't happy with the way the spring setup looked. And I'm still not happy totally with this one. But I went back and revisited the spring and built a couple more as you can see. And discovered that I was needing this little collar here to stop the pole from working its way upwards. So I've done that. Now the spring was 
to me was way too heavy so button the tension off a little bit and it seems to be working fine but I'm going to take it out and try it on the engine but there was a fair bit of work in that okay so we're out here at Travers and we've just wired this up and hopefully you can see the spark okay here we are we've got it on the engine all mounted up uh, just cut a quick gasket stuck in behind there and Trevor's going to make a new nut to replace that one there it's just one of the old rusted ones it functions so what Trevor's got to do now is make a bar that comes off this arm that's got a spring load on it to pull it down and it connects up to here so the bar comes when this rod comes forward to open the valve it hits that and then pushes over and lets the bar to keep continuing and then when it opens up when it returns it will um, fire the engine so this is a 1924 hercules hit and miss engine it was in really good nick then it went through the bushfires that we had here a couple of years ago and lost all the Babbitt bearings. It was completely sea solid. It was a wreck. I've also built, I'll be able to throw in a photo, a new, new bracket here that holds this governor jigger on. I've got a photo, I'll throw that in as well. Made it a few weeks ago. This engine uh, carby was missing. So Trevor's made up a new carby, a uh, new fuel tank in there, muffler, uh, redone the valves, new transporter, inside this box got the battery and the coil and this engine will hopefully be going in a couple of days I hope because it's got to go to a rally. Anyway yeah it's a 1924 Hercules, beautiful old engine, she's just about finished. Anyway, hope he's enjoyed and um, hopefully see us next week.